I'm not judging anyone, but sometimes the things we love doing just aren't good for us. This is especially true when it comes to things we put in our mouths. And just because everyone else is doing it doesn't make it a good idea. You may think almonds, for example, are as natural and honest as sunshine. In reality, wild almonds are full of enough cyanide to be lethal to children even in tiny amounts. Even modern almonds that have been bred to be sweeter and safer for thousands of years still have quite a bit of cyanide. But this poison pales behind another toxin it contains, which is seldom spoken of in the mainstream, oxalates. Just one bowl of sorrel soup has been known to kill, and with the insidious nature of this poison it could cause many, many deaths through kidney and metabolic damage, while remaining totally undetected, and even in tiny amounts it causes damage to the gut that I shudder to even think about. You're scared! But you're not even down here! You're safe! Safe! I'm not safe from seeing those terrible pictures in my head of you being eaten alive and never being able to get rid of them! You just think about you, don't you? It's always you with you, isn't it? All right, so it's oxalates. That's nothing new, right? Lots of people in the low carb world talk about them, and I've even mentioned them in a few videos myself. I do think you can live with a little oxalate and your body does produce oxalate as a byproduct of metabolism, so you can't totally avoid it. The main problem with oxalates is that many people trying to eat a very healthy lifestyle get conned into chowing down on greens like Swiss chard and spinach, or nuts like almonds and cashews that are particularly high in them. When you eat these supposedly healthy foods all day, you can seriously impair your health. Aside from literally ending your life, which is especially likely if you blend this kind of stuff into a smoothie or make a soup out of it like sorrel soup, it also causes kidney stones. Perhaps worse than that in practice is the horrible damage it does to your gut, which occurs at any dose and is dose dependent. So even if you're only eating a little oxalate, you're still doing damage. If you watch videos by vegans, they're always talking about their gut and how they need fiber to heal their gut. Gut, gut, gut. In reality, oxalates in the typical so-called healthy diet, especially the ones that they promote, is the gut-busting nightmare that leads many of them into these endless problems. And the only way to get out of it is to stop taking the oxalates and to do a few little tricks I'll talk about at the end of the video. This is more serious than it may appear at first glance because it's your gut that wards off the bacteria in your digestive tract from taking over your whole body. About half of your white blood cells spend all their time policing the gut and when it becomes damaged, they also become damaged. Eventually this leads to immunosenescence and once this happens, cancer, autoimmune disease or the slightest sniffle that comes along can take you down in a heartbeat. These immunosenescent immune cells are also the source of NAD plus deficiency with age, which causes aging by robbing the ability of the cells to repair themselves by activating the sirtuin genes, which require NAD plus, which is siphoned away by the CD38 enzyme, which is activated by your immune system fighting gut pathogens all the time. So this leads us to a, a, an interim model which is that senescence and the SASP uh, not only induces macrophage proliferations, macrophage senescence, we've shown uh, 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 that it also induces CD38 expression. Uh, both the induction of CD38 expression in uh, macrophages and in non-macrophages cells, as, as we have recently published, uh, we believe contribute to uh, the um, tissue-associated decrease in, in NAD and, and the uh, accompanying uh, metabolic dysfunction and sirtuin dysfunction. So the next question that I will uh, spend a few minutes on, uh, which is really key here, is to our effort to try to understand what activates CD38 expression in aging macrophages. The PAMs are pathogen-associated uh, molecular pattern. Uh, so these are molecules that are typically uh, released by pathogens. Whereas the dams are, um, are damage-associated molecular pattern. 
uh, signatures. These are molecules that are typically released by cells that are stressed or, or injured. And macrophages are able to recognize those, to activate a specific uh, signaling pathways and to leading to the release of cytokines, uh, chemokines, immune cell recruitments, inflammation, and tissue repair eventually. So our first question was, what uh, are any of these PAMs and DAMs able to activate um, CD38 expression in macrophages? And so the ex experiment was done by uh, isolating uh, primary macrophages from mice, uh, growing them in culture, and subjecting them to treatment with a variety of these PAMs and DAMs. And what emerged is actually a pretty striking picture. We were expecting the DAMs uh, to do it, but we were surprised to find that these macrophages actually responded primarily to pathogen-associated molecular signatures. In particular, uh, one of them uh, drew our attention. This is LPS. This is lipopolysaccharide. Um, this uh, particular uh, uh, molecule, which is released by, uh, by gram-negative gram bacteria, is actually um, uh, one of the, the main triggers for the differentiation of macrophages into a unique form in the so-called M1 macrophages. And this is the reason I talk about gut health so much. Gut health keeps you alive and youthful longer. And even if you don't want to live longer, you probably do want to be young looking and feeling as long as humanly possible. And believe me, as I get older, I can tell you, the longer you go feeling good, the happier you're going to be. You don't want to be old before your time. This is also part of why I can't stand some of the terrible health influencers we have who promote the worst garbage possible as if it's just fine, even good for you. They just promote whatever the government guidelines are. I'm pretty sure that's against the regulations. Blessed, Blessed be, be the regulations. regulations. <laughs> and the government just passes along whatever guidelines their corporate advisors tell them to pass along. I mean, honestly, these terrible influencers make me long to become a bus driver. I thought it was murder to kill a hologram. Morally, ethically, hologram killing, fine. Fair enough. <gasps> Come on, we haven't got all day. Now I got a lot of pushback about vitamin C a while back when I said it's probably not something you want to take very much of. Have you ever wondered if they've done animal longevity experiments with vitamin C? Well, they have, and the results were surprising. They were a complete failure. And not only did it fail to extend life, but it cut it short by up to 25%. Pretty strange, right? Well, not so strange when you realize that vitamin C ultimately degrades into oxalic acid. Simply by the horrific damage it does to the gut, it could actually cause immunosenescence and accelerating aging. It's also been shown to cause kidney failure by producing oxalate when people supplement just a few grams per day. That's right, the vitamin C supplementation protocols that many people are using could actually be lethal. If something is truly good for you, it will extend your life to have proper levels or even to go over what you could naturally get. This is very true of vitamin D, it's true of alpha-ketoglutarate, it's very true of both taurine and glycine, and it's true for many things I talk about on this channel. I strongly suspect it would hold true for many other things I talk about if it were actually scientifically tested, such as methylene blue, phototherapy, and more. I've talked about vitamin C in the past and why meat is actually the best source of the absorbable form called DHA or dehydroascorbic acid. Meat has plenty of vitamin C, but the form it has is not detected by the nutritional assays that were performed back in the 30s, which are what we go off of to say what the levels are today. In fact, it wasn't even really known about at the time. It has plenty of absorbable DHAA, but not so much that it can cause oxalate issues like a supplement of vitamin C could. The reason that many doctors and nutritionists obsess about vitamin C is that in people who consume lots of carbs and not much meat, glutathione is only at half the level it is in people who consume lots of meat and taurine and glycine are even lower. This means their antioxidant status is much lower than what it should be and the emphasis on vitamin C is a vain attempt to correct this that only causes more problems over time 
because our real natural antioxidant system is glutathione and superoxide dismutase and taurine and glycine are also important. I've talked badly of collagen supplements in the past and there's many reasons for that. They're expensive, they're almost always contaminated with glyphosate even if they're organic and it's hard to get down enough of them daily to make any difference. In short, they're a great money-making scheme, but they're not very practical. Collagen is comprised of glycine, glutamate, and hydroxyproline. If you ever wondered what vitamin C is needed for in the body, it's hydroxylating proline to make hydroxyproline, and this is what allows collagen to be made in the body. Thankfully, your body generally has plenty of hydroxyproline and only in extreme starvation or periods of prolonged lack of nutrients like on a sailing voyage where you're eating nothing but saltines, aka hardtack, and rotted meat, is this going to be a problem? You're seldom short on hydroxyproline when making collagen and you're never short on glutamate. There's also some question as to whether supplementing glutamate is a good idea at all because it can be used by cancer cells both as building blocks and as energy. You are almost always short on glycine though, and it's nearly impossible to overdose. That means in practice that you will get many times the benefit from supplementing glycine than you would by supplementing collagen itself. Keep in mind too, your body can't just absorb collagen whole. It has to chop it up into pieces and then rebuild it afterwards. And breaking it up is not very easy, so you may not absorb it in the first place. Well, I'd known that vitamin C degraded to oxalate, what I didn't realize was that hydroxyproline also ultimately degrades to oxalate as well. So not only are collagen supplements ineffective compared to taking glycine, and not only could they possibly contaminate you with glyphosate, but they can actually be harmful just by their natural chemistry in the body. So if you care about skin quality, mitochondrial health, or an endless list of other benefits, glycine is definitely something to look into. More info about glycine and some of the other supplements I take is in the video description as usual. And this includes the doses I take. When you have broth, you tend to get more of the glycine and less of the hydroxyproline. So broth is another good way to get glycine, but keep in mind you'll probably have to have quite a bit of it and you'll have to do it daily. So as usual, our ancestors managed to find ways to get the nutrients out of food without getting the potentially bad stuff, which always completely amazes me. Lately, a bunch of nonsense about advanced glycation end products and cooked meat has become popular to talk about. These can form by searing meat, but these same people won't tell you that the most damaging way to create these AGEs in the body is by consuming carbohydrate, especially in the form of fructose. Fructose metabolism leads to the creation of glyoxalates, which are some of the most harmful things you can have in your body. These cause thousands of times more AGEs than glucose or than fructose itself. And fructose is much, much more glycating than glucose is in the first place. It's a nightmare molecule with all the issues of oxalates, but magnified many, many times over. While you can ruin your kidneys supplementing large amounts of vitamin C, Glyoxalates are the driving cause of kidney damage in type 2 diabetes, which also increase blood pressure, which is a vicious cycle of deterioration. So the last thing that you want in your life is a bunch of fructose and a bunch of vitamin C, because this is just going to destroy your kidneys over time. And it's also going to raise your blood pressure and glycate you and age you and do many, many other bad things. Now the AGEs in roasted meat are almost all removed in the digestion process, but the AGEs produced in the body itself by consuming fructose are much more serious and numerous. And a lot of these are actually produced by interacting with your DNA directly. Glyoxalate can also cause genetic damage this way. And this also accelerates the aging process even more than glycation does, which is one of the other main factors. Just one more reason to limit fructose intake as much as possible, and I would strongly recommend to just avoid it if possible. Now you can't totally avoid oxalate because it is made inside your own body, but it has many bad effects that most people do not take seriously. Gut damage from oxalate is seldom talked about, and when it is, the seriousness is often glossed right over, 
or they just don't understand how extremely serious it is. Your gut is your first line of defense against pathogens, and if it's compromised, this also compromises your immune system, and it's your immune system that fights off the damage of aging, and if it's busy fighting pathogens, it can't repair that damage. Many plant-based foods have this toxin in it, and unfortunately, many of the supposedly healthiest plants have large amounts. This includes sorrel, sweet potatoes, spinach, Swiss chard, white potatoes, okra, grains, and kale. Most beans also have a lot of oxalate, but especially navy beans. Almonds and cashews are also high in oxalate, and most nuts have a fair amount, and the ones that don't have other big issues. Packaged cereals tend to concentrate oxalate, so many of them are pretty high in oxalate. Sadly, chocolate is also high in oxalate. Sorry, chocolate lovers. But if you do have chocolate, concentrate on milk chocolate and a higher fat content. You can get chocolate that has more cocoa butter, which is very good for you. But the actual cocoa itself is terrible for you. Glyoxalate is even worse than oxalate and is produced in the body when fructose is consumed. It destroys your kidneys and even overwrites your genetic code with gibberish, which leads to rapid aging. It also induces massive amounts of AGEs in the body or advanced glycation end products. While some will blame AGEs on meats, very little is absorbed in the digestion process, while consuming fructose will create huge amounts within the body itself. This is very harmful to your mitochondria. Milk is known to neutralize oxalates when they're consumed together because of the bioavailable minerals in milk, which will bond with oxalates to create compounds that won't be absorbed by the body. This causes them to pass harmlessly through the body. However, don't take any potassium citrate or calcium citrate as some people recommend. A citrate is very bad for you. And this is just going to cause oxalate dumping, which is not the thing that we're going for. Milk is also known for lowering uric acid levels in the body. And this is because of the erotic acid in milk. As it happens, oxalates have a very similar relationship with the erotic acid. So it is very likely that milk will also help to get rid of oxalates already in the body. Even better, this will happen in a gentle manner and there won't be any of the dreaded dumping you may have heard about. And this is going to work out much better for you than taking some artificial mineral substances, which generally only cause problems. While many people have trouble with dairy, usually due to bad gut health, ironically, full fat dairy is one of the potentially best ways to heal both your gut and oxalate issues over time. And I've had quite a few people tell me that when they started taking in raw milk, especially their oxalate problems just cleared up right away. I sometimes eat a potato if I go to a steakhouse, but keep in mind if you smother it with butter and sour cream, you will be significantly or even wholly protected from this poison, which is just one more reason to make sure you have plenty of healthy animal fat with every single meal. Thankfully, aside from potatoes once in a while, I just don't have much desire to eat most of these other foods. And the only reason that most people are eating them in the first place is that everyone is telling them how healthy they're supposed to be. And I'm glad I don't have that desire because hearing other people's problems with oxalates is very scary. Can't you see right now I need some me time? My heart is still hammering. I don't know how I got through that. You wasn't even there! I was nearly there. That's close enough for me. 